in this example we will analyze the working of <clears throat> cone and plate viscometer um, which is used to measure the viscosity of uh, different fluids especially non newtonian fluids so the construction is simple as you can see in this figure so there is a plate which is in, in the shape of a cone uh, and, and this angle is usually obtuse angle so the the angle that the slanted side of the plate makes with the horizontal theta is is very small typically it is 0.5 degrees uh, and then we just put the fluid uh, in between the horizontal surface and the plate and rotate the plate with fixed known angular velocity and measure the torque acting on this plate so this torque originates from the shear viscous stresses that are acting on this slanted area due to the fluid uh, and by measuring the torque we can relate the torque to the viscosity of the fluid and that way we, we can measure its uh, dynamic viscosity so um, so in in the part a we are asked to derive the expression for shear rate in the liquid uh, and as you may know shear rate is nothing but the velocity gradients in the in the fluid so i'll, I'll sketch the schematic again so this is the plate this is the conical section the base this angle is theta this radius is r and let's say at a distance small r from the center this height is small h uh, and we want to find the shear rate here so the shear rate here will be just the vertical velocity gradient at that point uh, and the plate is rotating with an angular velocity of omega so since uh, this theta is very small the fluid in this gap will be moving such that such that the fluid flow field uh, in this small gap here will be linear so since this plate is moving with an angular velocity of omega so this point here will be moving inside uh, the inside the plane of of this page we can velocity omega times r so shear rate is basically du times du d1 so u is the velocity here and and y is the vertical direction so if we assume a linear profile the velocity at this bottom point is zero the velocity here is omega r going inside and this thickness is h so du is nothing but r omega minus 0 and dy is h minus 0 so shear rate is equal to r omega by h and this is the solution to part a where we were asked to find the shear rate in this figure we are only given the radius uh, and the and the angle theta but we are not given the height h at any point but we can relate the height h at any point to the angle theta and, and the radial position there because if i zoom in here what i am 
C is basically a right angle triangle with this angle being theta, this side being h, and this distance being r. So basic trigonometry tells me tan theta is h by r. So the height h is r tan theta. Now substituting this here, I get shear rate to be equal to r omega on r tan theta which is omega upon tan theta. So this is the expression for shear rate in terms of given variables and shear rate remember is nothing but the velocity gradient. Uh, now in part b we are asked to evalu evaluate the torque uh, that we require to rotate this cone with fixed angular velocity omega in terms of shear stress and the <coughs> geometry of the cone. So as you know torque is nothing but r cross f so we need to eva evaluate the force acting on the cone first. So I'll sketch it again. So for this small area here at a distance r and height again h we need to find a small force acting on that small area so again remember this small area if you look from uh, look at it from the bottom is will be a circular thing like this along the along the circumference of this slanted cone uh, and if i again zoom in here so this is the area let's say da and it makes an angle theta with the horizontal so so the <clears throat> shear stress on this is due to the vertical gradient in the velocity uh, and the shear stress is tau y theta so theta is the polar direction y is the vertical direction and and the small force df will be tau y theta at y equal to h and now we need to decide since this is a slanted area we need to decide which area to use is it the horizontal projection or the vertical projection uh, this is slightly complicated compared to the case when you just have a flat bottom and under disc let's say is rotating so since you you don't have this slanted angle you you will use this ring which is at a height h but since this is a slanted cone we need to use we need to use the horizontal projection of this area and since this angle is theta this angle is also theta so this horizontal projection area is da times cos theta so we will be using this area to calculate force from the shear stress now if you look closely da cos theta is nothing but 2 pi r d dr so basically again if i zoom in this is the strip and at a distance r from the center and of thickness dr in the horizontal direction so this 
small area here the horizontal projection of this small area is nothing but 2 pi r dr so substituting it in the force so df is tau y theta y equal to h times 2 pi r dr so since torque is r cross f we will get torque to be equal to the small torque acting on this small area here will be r times df which is equal to r tau r theta at y equal to h multiplied by the horizontal projection of the area now we can find out the total torque by integrating on both sides and here we are integrating with respect to r so the limits are from r equal to 0 to r equal to capital R this integrand here so if you integrate it you will find out that total torque is equal to 2 pi times 0 to r in integration tau by theta at y equal to h r square dr so this is the expression of torque in terms of uh, in terms of the shear stress and the geometry of the plate now for non newtonian fluid we the 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 relationship between shear stress and shear rate is very complicated and hence we it 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 can be a function of shear rate not it it might be a non linear function of shear rate and depending on which fluid we are using we will have to use that complicated function here to integrate this term but for a newtonian fluid we know that there is a linear relationship between stress and and shear rate so stress is equal to the viscosity times the shear rate that's your um, newton's law of viscosity so tau y theta is mu times du by dy at y equal to h so this is what we need to use in the third part of the question we are where we are asked to evaluate the torque required to drive the cone for the newtonian fluid so part c for a newtonian fluid we know the expression for shear stress at y equal to h so it is mu times du by dy y equal to h which is we have already calculated du by dy at y equal to h in part a so this is omega upon pan theta So if, if we just substitute this expression in the expression we derived for torque, it will find out that T is equal to 2 pi integrate from 0 to R mu omega divided by tan theta R square dr. So if you integrate, this will come out to be 2 pi by 3 mu omega r cube tan, tan theta. So, this is the expression for the torque that is required to drive the cone and plate viscometer with a constant rotational velocity omega. Uh, and again, if you look carefully here on the right hand side, all of these 
terms are fixed. So if we rotate it with a constant rotational velocity, r and theta are fixed by the geometry. And if we measure the torque, then we will be able to find out the dynamic viscosity of the of the fluid from here. So that is the basic principle of operation of a cone and plate rheometer. And since theta is small, we can also use the limit tan theta is equal to theta when theta is very, very small. So you can also write this as T is the torque is basically mu omega q divided by theta. So that's it.